Okay, this is video number three for C1, uh, Chemistry Revision. So we're going to look at the limestone cycle, as you can see, and you need to know the process that limestone goes through, it's broken down, then we can make it into lime water and turn it back into limestone again. And you'll need to know the stages because they could pick any stage for this cycle. So we're going to start off with limestone. The chemical name for limestone is it's mainly made up of calcium carbonate, or CaCO3. You need to know that chemical name and the formula because they often ask you about it in the exam. So we can break this down using heat. Okay, so if we break something down using heat, the process is called thermal decomposition, and we turn it into two products. We turn it into carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. Okay, they're the two products when we heat it. So you might have done this in school with a limestone chip on the corner of a gauze, heated it with the Bunsen burner and broken it down into carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. Now they might ask you about a different carbonate, not calcium carbonate. So they might ask you about zinc carbonate or calcium or, or um, sodium carbonate. They will decompose in exactly the same way, and if we had sodium carbonate, it would make sodium oxide and carbon dioxide. If we had zinc carbonate, it would make carbon dioxide and zinc oxide. So it's the same thing. The only difference might be it won't it will need it won't break down with a Bunsen burner flame. It may need slightly more heat than that, but that will be the only difference. So make sure you can apply this theory to a different metal carbonate they might give you. So the limestone cycle, it starts with calcium carbonate, which is limestone, heat it, break it down, turn it into carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. If we then add some water to calcium oxide, we then get calcium hydroxide. So we're adding in the hydrogen, so oxide to hydroxide, that's calcium oxide. If we add slightly more water again, we then get calcium hydroxide solution, and that's more commonly known as lime water, and you'll use that in school to test for the presence of carbon dioxide. Because if we add carbon dioxide to lime water, which is completely colourless, it's clear, we can add carbon dioxide in, so add that in, and we make limestone, okay? So that's why it goes cloudy in the presence of carbon dioxide, because you're making little tiny grains of limestone or calcium carbonate. So lime water is used as a test for carbon dioxide because lime water turns cloudy when we so if you breathed into lime water with a straw bubbled it through it would go cloudy okay so the only other carbonate reaction you need to be aware of alongside which is mentioned in your specification is the reaction of a carbonate and an acid okay so if you have a calcium carbonate and an acid it will make carbon dioxide and a salt and water. So just be aware of those reactions there as well for that one, okay? So the limestone cycle is there. Now, why do we need to worry about the limestone cycle? Well, limestone is actually very useful. It's useful to make limestone its own it's for building, but it also makes these products here. So it makes cement, it makes mortar, and it makes concrete. So three different products that are used for slightly different things. Cement can be have limestone and clay added together to make cement. To make mortar, we need to add cement and sand together. So we use this here and add sand to it. And then for concrete, we have the cement we made at the beginning. We add sand just like mortar, but this time we add aggregate or stones to the mixture and that makes concrete, okay? So these are three key products that are made using limestone, okay? So where do we get limestone from? Well, we quarry it out of the ground and there's also fours and against, so negatives and positives of that process that you could well be asked in a six mark question. So the positives of quarrying is that it's a resource. We know we need it to make concrete. We need it to make mortar, cement, etc. We need it for these products. We can also use it to make glass as well. It's good for employment, so if the local quarries near you would be employing people, so that's also very useful. And once we've finished quarrying, we're now left with a giant hole, so we can fill that maybe with water and make a diving centre, so it can become a tourist attraction in the long run. So they're all positives of quarrying. Negatives are, it's obviously doesn't look very nice, visual pollution, it's noisy because it's heavy traffic and it could damage habitats. So that's the limestone cycle, that's what you need to know about it. You need to know how it, all these things, you've got limestone breaking down to carbon dioxide, calcium oxide, adding water, making calcium hydroxide, adding a bit more, making lime water, and then adding carbon dioxide and making it back into limestone. Okay, so that's a test for carbon dioxide. The things you can use um, with limestone to make, 
and then the fours and against of quarrying. Okay, so that's the key things there from the limestone cycle in C1.